Hi everyone, happy Friday. Welcome back to Nalo's Thrift Talk. I'm Lola. And I'm Nay. And today we have a special guest. Yeah, so we have Brian Satinover. And Brian, do you wanna say hi and tell us just a little bit about yourself? Hello everyone. Um, <laughs> let's see. I, uh, I've been selling online before the internet. So uh, very, very <laughs> very <laughs> I've actually actually uh, started a video game club when I was in junior high or something. And I actually got free samples and I actually sold at a flea market. My mom had to drive me because I wasn't, of course, of driving age. But. Um, but, yeah, I've uh, I was selling on news groups, basically uh, news groups and dial up before we had what we call now the Internet. So yeah, that's cool. exciting. So and you sell we're going to be talking today. Brian sells a lot of different items. He is he is delving into fashion now, too. And we're, we're kind of helping him out with that, too. But um, he his main thing is electronics, video games and computers, which is completely outside of of Lola and I. Um, that's that's out of our comfort zone, although we are trying to learn new areas and delve into different things. We are by no means anywhere near experts in that. <laughs> category. So Brian is going to educate us and uh, show us some bolos. And he has a great eBay store that we're going to, we're going to talk about where to find him and whatnot, but um, he's going to show us what to look for and some things not to look for, I think too. Yeah. So this will be one of those shows where instead of us sharing what we know, we will be learning a lot. I exactly. Think. Yes. And I've, I've, you know, made a few purchases of like electronics and video game type things on, um, especially on uh, shop Goodwill. And I've always been like really hesitant. I really want to get more confident. Um, like when I have a good hunch to, to know yeah. how to evaluate things. So I'm really excited to expand my areas of, you know, comfort. So, yes, I can't wait. This just makes me have, the, have a, greater itch to be going into a live thrift store too. Yeah. I'm fine that I'm fully vaccinated, you know, I'll still wear a mask and I'm fine. But my problem is my kids are still in remote school and school goes until the end of June. So I can't just, you know, be like, and my mom has been, she's had some health issues and she's staying with me and I can't just be like, bye, going to the thrift store. See you later. You know? So oh man, um, I miss those days where it was like once a week, we had spent a whole day. I know that, that used to be will like, actually you know, happen. And someday that'll happen again. It but will. Yes. Until then we have our weekly shows, which is always great. And I always also love having someone who's usually in the chat, like face to face with us on the show. Oh, that so. Was so exciting. Cause Brian is usually in the chat, but today he is in mm -hmm. the guest seat. So Really fun. Um, so Brian is going to be participating in our usual segments. And as the guest of honor, mm -hmm. um, we're, uh, if, if Brian would uh, go first to say what he is wearing that's thrifted today. Okay. Um, my shirt first. I did get a Goodwill for $5, Bogachi shirt. Oh, um, nice. So it's, you know, it is a nice shirt. I and like then, the color. Course, khaki shorts. <laughs> <laughs> and then, which is nice, Le uh, Levi's shorts, and then shoes. I actually found a pair of Skechers Ooh, for, nice. believe it or not, was half price, $2.50. Oh, and my these God. Are, these are the heavier ones, which I've never seen before. I really like these. And it's, so these are nice. So Skechers, a, you know, uh, Skechers don't necessarily hold the best resale value. However, they are some of the most comfortable shoes that I've ever worn too. I love, I, I have some Skechers that I love wearing too. Yeah, I'm at $12.50. Wow, nice. that is a good outfit there. <laughs> I don't think we, we ever um, do the like total of our outfits. We should start doing yeah, that. That's good. that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to go next thing? Sure. So I was trying today to find like, I thought, you know, somewhere in my collection, and this is this kind of is eye opening because one of the things that Brian sells is like video game related apparel. So I thought I must have like an Atari shirt or a Pac Man mm -hmm. shirt or something either in my inventory or like, you know, something in my nothing. So the closest thing I could find was this uh, Stranger Things t shirt that it's. 
It's not video game, but it done, you know, it's pix it's got the pixelated characters and it's kind of so it's kind of like it's kind of like a throwback to, you know, like an old school video game kind of. So that is my um that's my and I got this. So I actually got this at Goodwill a while back when I was still thrifting in person. I think I paid $2.99 for it and it was new with tags at the time. And it was like when the Stranger Things big craze was going on like when it was really really blowing up and i was gonna sell it and then i tried it on i was like oh i'm gonna keep it so it's my shirt um and then my um i just got this ring from thrift to you i got another box so pretty it is really pretty and i don't know if it's sterling it's not marked or anything it's actually made really well and it's actually cut glass it's not plastic it's glass oh i thought you know my guess at first was it was going to be like no it's meat. actually gla glass and it's heavy so it's actually well made i mean it's like a cz or whatever in the middle or a crystal but yeah. um it's actually really it seems well made and it fits me perfect of course they don't have any sizing or anything so i had no idea what size i was going to mm -hmm. get but i wanted a ring for this finger and it actually fits so that right. was fun. And then I'll show my sneakers today too. So <laughs> I was gonna sell these too. Um, these are New Balance and I got them a while ago. I think the price is still on the bottom. Um, $7.99 at Goodwill. And I got these at the New York City region Goodwill like a couple of years ago, like right after I moved. And I was gonna sell them, they were size 10 which is my big foot size. And I've been walking a lot lately, like walking like three miles a day because I've been trying to lose weight. And um, I'm down like somewhere like 16 pounds now. I have to weigh myself on Monday, but the walking's working. So my old sneakers, I was walking so much that my old, my old, I have so many pairs of sneakers, but the ones that I was, my <laughs> other favorite go-to pair, what the, the treads were starting to really get like worn down. So I was like, oh, I need a new pair of sneakers. Went into my inventory and I got these and I've been wearing them for a couple of weeks now and they're starting to get broken in really well, but um, they're really comfy. So, you know, sometimes you just go to your inventory and, mm -hmm. you know, I might have been able to sell these for a decent amount, but I scored a new pair of shoes from my inventory. So well, it's, when it's something that you actually need, it's yeah. the difference between yeah. what you could have profited on selling it and what you would have bought them new if you were buying them exactly because when i'm walking like you know three miles a day i can't just walk in like you know mm -hmm. on it, has, it can't just be like my old converses or it has to be like really good <laughs> sneakers that are you know so yeah so that's still that's still a win even if you're not you're not making exactly that Okay, so I am wearing, you probably recognize this from our haul. I could not resist the Talbot's linen. It is so pretty. It looks pretty on you. you. I, yes. I wish it was a little bigger. I thought it was going to fit a little better, but... um. Yeah, but it fits I kind of, it. It looks, it's kind of like an open cardigan. Yeah, yeah. I think it would look really cute on someone um, who's smaller to, you know, wear it buttoned close in the front, but... um. But yeah, I'm enjoying wearing it once and then I'll list it and uh, send it off to the next person who can enjoy it. It looks cute. You look very pretty today and your hair is growing, I notice. I know, I'm so excited. I think I'm gonna finally get a haircut. Um, my birthday is in a couple weeks and I think I'm gonna get a haircut for my birthday. The last time I got it cut was I think last August. So it's been like yeah. know, almost a year. <laughs> A couple of years ago, you shaved it. It was. I did, good. yeah. And then I had a pixie cut for a while. So I think as of like the end of 2019, when we moved to Massachusetts, mm -hmm. I had almost no hair. I had like, so over the past year, it's grown almost that much. A yes. year and a half, I guess. Yeah. So pretty happy with it. Yeah. Well, if you look at that picture, yeah. there, that's about when you had it shaved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that was like two years ago, I think. Yeah, it was a couple years, years ago, yeah. I didn't. Uh, yes. Did I always wanted to do something, something wild. Well, it's fun, and then uh, it's good time for summer too. Mm -hmm. And our thrift at home decor items of the week. I am interested to see what Brian has because he kind of teased it before the show. He was like, "Oh yeah, I've got my item right here," so I'm excited to see what he has. So, as the guest of honor, Brian, do you want to go first? Sure. Yeah. I actually picked a couple different things. They're all related. Um, all Judaica. Oh, Year, nice. Years ago at a garage sale, I picked, this is called, I, well, she said it was called the Jewish Evil Eye. And you 
Yeah, uh, actually, have the sticker from the garage sale costs one dollar. Wow! And you said you hang it on your door, and it wards off evil. And it says success, luck, happiness, love, and health. And that, that's just, that's by the front door. Is it heavy? Mm -hmm. It looks like it's um. Is it actually like stainless steel or? Honestly, I don't know what it is uh, made out of. It is uh, made in Israel, but nice. I don't know what yes, it's made it's out of. Well made. Nice. Mm -hmm. In my kitchen, I got this at Goodwill for 99 cents. Little Shalom star with the 12 tribes of Israel on there. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is that also from Israel? Like a a, yes. a tourist, like a yeah. souvenir? Probably. I, I think it is. But I was like, this is my Sabbath candle holder. And I have a little story behind this. Mm. I did find this at Goodwill. It was under $5. And every time I find something like this, I send a picture to my mom or I show it to my mom. And in this case, she wanted to show it to her friends because I we asked them. You know, they said this is the twelve tribes of Israel. Well, she, she showed it to her friend, and she gave it back to me and said her friend looked at it and was confused because there's only six tribes on here. So I looked at it and I looked told my mom. I said, um, "You do realize there's six tribes here too, twelve uh, tribes of Israel." Okay, so, so she only the one side and did not notice. <laughs> but I use this uh, every Friday. So very nice. Wow. I will, I will have to put up a Pinterest page of all the menorahs and all the Judaica stuff I find because I have a lot. I picked up four napkin holders uh, the other day, but I saw you posted those. It's that's great. Yeah, I, Heather's I yeah, I save them from, from the thrifts. I don't I don't like seeing them there because I don't trust people, you know, someone will well, we, dispose of um, them. Yeah, we had, um, when we had, a, I, I guess you probably saw our Judaica show, we had our, our friend Zach Portman on, and he actually, um, he makes, um, mit, I'm going to say it wrong, mezuzahs? Yeah, mezuzah. Okay, I said it right. Um, so he makes those, um, he creates, uh, he actually like carves uh, gravestones and whatnot, you know, a, a, um, but he is, um, he knows so much about that stuff, and he when we had him on, he was, he was, we got so much, you know, so much information about um, menorahs and the difference between a menorah and a, um, is it a candle? There's, oh, a um, Hanukkah. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, the, a menorah, one of them is kosher, the other one isn't. If it's, uh, if they're in funky orders, it's one way. If it's all in a line, it's kosher. So it has to be, you know, they have to be, I don't know the exact definition. Um, my mom's husband knows all that. And he, okay. he has a story behind it all, but yeah, one of them. If it's kosher, it's it's like in a, in a in a line, and the other ones that are funky ones that are really cool. But yeah, it's yeah. a difference. It's Those there's are. some beautiful items though. Um, and when I, I if I when I do find them in the thrift, I've sold a couple of menorahs, but I actually have one that I found. I'm not Jewish, but it's so beautiful. I can't part with it. It's just you know, th some of them are just so well crafted and. Uh, you know, there are some things that should not end up in the thrift. Like uh, we had found a, a, ton, a tanak, which is, um, we had talked about that a while ago, which is um, like a bound uh, version of a Torah. And it was actually in the thrift store there. We rescued it. Uh, we contacted our friend, Zach, and um, he tracked down the family and it ended up going back to the niece of the rabbi. So. Kind of like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god. Behind, right? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah sure. That's a really neat thing though that you also collect Judaica when you find it in the thrift stores. Yeah. Very oh, okay. So it isn't I thought it might be on my end. So Brian, yeah. it sounds like you're a, li a little bit behind, which you did mention you were worried might happen. Um, yeah, it's it's happened. It's uh when I get the new computer, I'll probably, you know, things will probably be better for me. This, right now, this machine is kind of slow. We can, we can hear you. Know. It's just like your voice. It looks almost like you're dubbed, like your voice. Oh, you're speaking. Yeah. <laughs> <I hear you. laughs> but it's not too bad. It, but I, I, we, I love your home decor items. Thank you so much for sharing those. Uh, Nate, you, you want to go next? Sure. So I have... Um, of course, giraffe related items. So this is actually, I got this, this, I just got another box from Thrift2U and this, everything is a dollar, of course. So this is a giraffe wind-up toy 
that it's home decor to me because I'll put it like on my desk or you know somewhere as as a yeah. Oh so it's just gosh. a cheap McDonald's uh, toy. It's from the Disney um, Wild Kingdom or something. I can't remember mm -hmm. what the, I looked it oh. up, but I mean it's only worth like six bucks if I were to resell it. I'm not going to resell it. But you know, for me, that's a score for a dollar because mm -hmm. I collect drafts. So it's just a plastic toy, but it's it's very cool. And then my mug actually from today is a Turvis tumbler from the thrift store. Cute. Um, yeah. That's so fun. this is um, my iced coffee is from a thrifted. Uh, <laughs> and I think that what I paid for the probably you know just like two or three dollars. It was a while ago, but it was in it was like brand new. So it, it anything that is giraffe when I find in the thrift store, I will grab because for some odd reason I've gravitated towards giraffes and from the time I was a little girl. So don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and Lola, what do you have today? So I, I have two things because I. I forgot I had an idea for something like related to today's show, but it's not really home decor. So I also have like a more home decor item. Um, but recently a friend of mine upgraded her switch. Um, and so she was selling her switch light and I've been wanting to get one, but I wasn't, I mean, I'm not really a huge video game person, so I wasn't sure how much I would play, you know, use it. Um, so it was perfect that I was able to get it secondhand instead of, paying full price for it. And then of course she lucked out cause she was able to put the, you know, put what I paid her for this one towards her new one. So we were both super happy. And then I remembered, I also have, this was not thrifted. This was bought brand new. This is Chris's <laughs> original Game Boy. Wow. It still works. Um, currently doesn't have batteries in it cause I had to, uh, I spent some time cleaning out the like corrosion. So I didn't want it to happen again. And actually wow. now, didn't do a perfect job, but it does run. Um, and I have Super Mario Land in it. Um, and I just thought it's kind of perfect for, <laughs> for today. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, what, so would Chris ever part with that? No, no. Yeah. We thought about it. And um, I don't well, think it's worth it enough to outweigh the like sentimental value of having it. So, so Brian, what would that be worth if, if she were to sell it? They fluctuate. Um, I, I don't normally sell them because the ones that I get uh, usually need repair. Mm -hmm. But uh, people will pay. I'm going to cheat. People pay a good amount for uh, Game Boy systems. Um, what about that, the... Uh, let's see. Are the games worth anything? Um, oh, yeah. Or pretty, oh. yeah uh, games, all, it, games all do depend on titles. And mm -hmm. uh, there are... Let's see if... Did it pop up? Wow. According to Amazon, and I don't trust 100%, mm -hmm. but that original system is currently, you're not going to see, $65. Oh, not too bad. So, yeah. Supposedly. Now, it's going to be less on eBay, but it is collectible. Games, uh, there's a app called Price Charting or Video Game Price Charting, and there's another one called Game Value Now. And you can enter any title of any game, and it'll tell you what the supposed values are depending on eBay, Amazon, and other marketplaces. Mm -hmm. And it's a great app to have, especially when you have games, because some of those games, there there are games that are worth several hundred dollars. And there, of course, some games are worth So this one's probably, I mean, this is one of the most common games, which is Super yeah. Mario Land. Let's see. What is the it's, app called again, Brian? Video Game Price Charts is one of them, which looks like they haven't loaded it up. And you just type oh, in the okay. game, or actually you could type it in, or I think if you got a barcode, it's got a barcode scanner. So if you mm -hmm. get a package, and then is let's see if game values now is just a no, I think game values now is a website only. They're both they're both available on the internet, so you, you know, for your browser. Mm -hmm. But um, I normally don't use the app too much. I use eBay and Amazon seller apps because it's just a lot easier to yeah actually yeah. look at the platform. And some people say the data is a little off on those, but it does give you historical trends on what the games go for. Yeah, yeah. So, but it is something I have. Uh, um, do you use uh, Worth Point or um, Worth Point or or um, Terapeak? I use Terapeak. I have not yet subscribed to Worth Point. My goal is because I'm getting into clothing, 
and getting into some more collectibles. Maybe by third or fourth quarter, I'll do the worth point subscription. But right now, for me, um, I don't have the need in, yeah. in, in the media section. Now, some people some people say that I should, but I figure the more the more I get out of my where I'm you know, my categories and do other things because collectibles and, and certain clothing and other stuff that aren't as easy to research, mm-hmm. you know, with a one year and tier peak. Right. So that's that's my right. goal for quarter three, quarter four. Okay. Very cool. Yes. Um, so our next segment is um, I have a couple um, examples of um, I have a couple things I'm, and I'm kind of going to put Brian on the spot here. But um, so um, for our holy poop emoji, this sold segment, I have a couple items that I found that were kind of video game related. So this and I think it's kind of with um, a, 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 um, a matter of the the Per, the seller not really researching what they had. So instead of, they said just weird third party controller, you know? So this this bundle sold, it was a NTSCU Nintendo 64 with all cables, 96 plus weird 30, third party controller, but it sold for $51. And I guess, you know, the funny part was that, you know, they had some horrible pictures and they just plus weird third party controller. But so, um, I'm sure they could have done this better and probably sold it for more, Brian. Yeah, I, I don't like third-party controllers. I know that controller. Um, the picture, yeah. of course, as you said, is awful. Yeah, um, yeah. They need to clean their floor a little better, too. I know, but, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but NTSC is our video system. PAL is UK. Um, okay. The words they put in there are just strange. But that gamepad, I, when I sell systems, one of the things that I recommend for anybody selling video games is use if you're gonna sell a console, use the console controller. Don't use generic controllers. Yeah. Um, not just for the value, but for the quality. You know, because some of the, yeah. Uh, there are some controllers that are clones that look like the controller, but they don't work like the controller. And that, yes, that's. They, yeah, I know. You, so they probably would have been better off to just like source a, a Nintendo 64 controller, and right. It's not as easy as it sounds, but yes. Okay. They probably got that as a bundle from a thrift store and just listed what they got. That's my guess. Yeah, yeah. But I'm wondering if they could have, you know, I'm just surprised with those pictures with just weird third party controller that they sold it, you know, for 51 bucks. <laughs> but so they, they probably did well, um, but they could have done a lot better. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. 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 And then my other one that I found was weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So that, so I think in this case, they just didn't know what they had. So they just listed it and, you know, they got 20 bucks for it. But I'm wondering, again, if they had listed it properly, if they probably, if they maybe could have gotten more. I don't know what that stuff is exactly, but they just listed it as weird stuff. <laughs> and then their description is even funnier. It's like. Um, oh, eat proms. Yeah, I, this is one of those weird stuff. I'd better buy it purchases. From what I can tell, it was made to make game parts and probably, I don't even know. It's like, um, but it's just funny that, um, so they sold whatever, whatever the weird stuff was. It, it sold for $20. <laughs> those might, if they're EPROMs, those could be the, um, the, the chips that go inside the cartridge. It could be like a programmer collection. So they okay. could be something that a collector might like you're right. The description is, in in this case, this is where you kind of want to go down the rabbit hole a little bit because if you do the right research, you can probably get about ten times what you asked or, or what they got That's for this what I'm one. Thinking it's, that, yeah, that they sold it. They probably undersold it by just not doing the research and just listing it as weird stuff, you know. So that's what you don't want to do, I would think. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it sold. They got twenty bucks for it, so maybe they're happy. <laughs> And then um, I just wanted to, next week, we're going to be doing a show about 10 summer 2021 home decor trends. So there are some, some things trending for um, in the home decor segment and some things that you might want to look for when you're out thrifting that, you know, will sell on different online platforms. And uh, we'll be talking about those next week. So join us on the 21st, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And we're going to jump into our main segment. We haven't even really started our main segment yet. So Heather's asking, um, what is an EEPROM? But maybe we should get back yeah. to that once 
once we get more into the meat of stuff? Or would you want to answer that now, Brian? I'm going to cheat and look it up. Oh. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> it's an erasable, programmable, read-only memory. So basically, mm -hmm. it's the, chi the chip itself is an erasable, programmable, read-only memory chip. So basically, it's the chip that they use in the cartridge itself. It's considered an EEPROM mm -hmm. chip. So, um, you know, when, when, anytime you get a cartridge, like an Atari or the old system, you know, the Nintendo 64, it's basically an EEPROM cartridge. And that's what stores the game out there, right on the on the on the chip, and the chip's got the mm -hmm. uh, that's got the game on it. Oh, okay. Well, so those are like the guts of the cartridge. It's just, yeah, the center of the. Um, now that you can see that image, but that's as I there we go a little bit. Okay. <laughs> okay. The yeah. There's a chip in the center of the cartridge, and there's a lot of people who do uh, programming. Um, I actually I actually found at a garage sale or thrift somewhere, a prom programmer, which is even older, the little box, it has all the wires and we can program them. Uh, but there are people who actually make homebrewed cartridges. Mm. So they would need the EEPROM program. And like, um, Odyssey 2, which has been, of course, from the 80s, there are people who have come out with games 10 years ago or five years ago. They, they program their own games, limited runs. So it's, it's a fun way to program for programmers. That's really cool. Yeah, I can't do. I'd like to. Is it something that um, you would have to know how to test it to make sure it works? Um, if Honestly, I don't do EEPROMs. I've never done. I've never dealt. I've done uh, the programming I used to do was pre-internet in college. You know, when you do those classes of the languages we normally use, like Fortran, right. uh, um, machine language type stuff. I've never done EEPROM programming. Um, I wrote computer programs for like TRS-80 in high school, but that's totally different. So mm -hmm. I've never gotten into that myself. I've never learned that. It's something that would be interesting because if you could make a game yeah. and put out a cartridge. And it looks so. like there are people that buy it. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I guess we'll dive into, um, I know you said a little bit about yourself, but um, how did you start getting thr start thrifting and reselling online? And then um, if you could just tell us like what platforms you sell on and what really got you started with selling like electronics, games, and computers. I know you told us a little bit, but. Thrifting, um, I remember as a kid, um, my, my dad took us to flea markets and I can remember not everything, but I remember one of them we didn't go to much because it had a pretty bad smell to it. Um, but I do remember, that's one thing I remember about going to the flea market. Well, it smelled like the vendors kind of used their booth as their bathroom. Um, so I don't, oh, okay. It just, it just, it was just not, you know, it, 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 that building was not the nicest. But I remember yeah. that we used to go thrifting. My dad liked, you know, we liked thrifting. Um, he would take us and do things like that. From then, uh, he ended up getting a computer store. And unfortunately, he had worked on a business loan that didn't work out. And the store didn't do, you know, he had to close the store. When I was in college, um, I worked in the library. Uh, you know, where people would check out computers. You know, you, you come in, you give me your ID, you get a computer. And people were buying 3M floppy disks from the bookstores. And everyone's disks were failing. So I figured, why not sell floppy disks? And I ordered disks from a... I started my business selling floppy disks. I started a business where I was ordering good quality floppy disks, selling to people who have either Mac or PC. And my disks weren't failing. I saw One person lost his doctoral because the 3M disk oh, failed. Oh, and wow. This can read. So I went from uh, on the college campus, I started, started with floppy disks, and I figured, well, that relates to computers and video games. And I figured my thought was if I had the money to get a store, if I want to run a computer store by selling video games, it brings the kids in. And then the parents want to see that, you know, what do the computer stuff. So you're bringing right. kids in to the store. So the idea was to generate the traffic. Um, my first selling online, like I said, was pre-internet. I was selling hard drives. We're talking right now, 500 gig, terabyte, five ter, all this big. I was selling 20 meg hard drives and 40 yeah. meg. I mean, like a small on my flash drive. Yeah, it's a small flash drive. And you're talking $200 back. I mean, I can look up what they were back then. $200 back then. People were buying on. It was like all dot hard drives for sale. So there were news groups. I would go to quote a dial up. I'd log into the news group. And I would list my prices, and then people would send me checks, money orders, or cash. My gosh! And I would ha have my distributor ship to the customer, 
And, you know, I was, uh, that's basically where I started uh, online. And then wow. ironically, the year I graduated college is when they installed internet. The dorms were getting wired and everything. So I didn't even have internet in college. It was the year after. And then from that, I went to, um, I started selling at a flea market. I was selling computer stuff and video games. Um, we moved from another building. When the other building closed, I knew a couple people that owned a record store. And they had a big back room they never used. So that let me move into their back room. And I actually had a, I was subleasing retail, um, which was fun because I was part of a record store. So I learned, you know, I, was, I knew music, but I learned because I've worked in music stores. I'd run their store. So if they couldn't make work, I'd run their store and mine. It was fun. Um, and then from there, we were doing, in the store, we were doing eBay, uh, mostly buying, but we were also learning about selling on eBay. And right after that, I started learning Amazon. So with eBay and Amazon, um, and then after that store closed, I went to another flea market. And from there, I was right on Amazon. And then there was a website called Price Grabber, which now doesn't let you sell on it. I was doing Price Grabber. Um, and now of course all the other websites out there. Wow. So, so you were on Amazon. It sounds like fairly early. Like I, cause I remember being on eBay in like the dark ages when there were like five categories and stuff, but I, it didn't even occur to me back then that, you know, Amazon would be a place I would sell stuff. Um, yeah. Much, much I remember longer. like way back in the day too, like thinking about Amazon is just a place where you buy books, you yeah. know, like, yeah. So what, what Amazon, I think I, Amazon, I think I started in the 2000, 2003, 2000, it was 2000, it was a little after 2000. I know I was, well, I was on half.com also. That was a big platform yeah, for me. Half, yeah. um, but uh, Amazon was, mm -hmm. I forgot exactly when, but I know it was before 2003. It was before 2003, but it was, it was around 2000, right, at, right around that time period. I started learning about Amazon, 2002 or so. Um, That's pretty early. But when I, was, you know, when I was at the flea market, because I was a business, I was able to buy video games from wholesalers. And a lot of my new stock came from distribution. And when you learn all the different dis distributors, some of them have B and C titles. So I figured, well, since I'm at a flea market, I'm not going to be able to sell a $50 game you can get at Target or Walmart, you know, because someone's going to say it's the same price mm. because it, it costs $42 to sell a $50 game. So what am I going to sell it for to be less than a store? So I would buy the B stock and the C stock. I know games for $9.99, $19.99, and, you know, people would want a cheap game. They get a brand new sealed game cheaper. So that's why right now when I've, the games that I have on – listed on eBay and Amazon are going for so much. Some of that B and C stock since it's been discontinued for so long is sought after, especially sealed. So I'm basically yeah. clearing out the stuff that I had from back then that I couldn't sell. Wow. Now it's, it's collectible, I guess. So yeah. Some, yeah it's sometimes it's, it's like anything else with research. Um, someone was selling six packs of a Sega Saturn game um, really cheap on eBay years ago. And there were two titles, Hexen and Courier Crisis. They're all brand new sealed games, and you know, all of them in perfect condition. They came in, you know, they, they came in the these cartons, which are, I don't think it's called a master carton. I, I think it's it, it belong, it, it is a, the sealed carton of games. And I just ended up selling it. Was it uh, someone just purchased Courier Crisis? Well, Hexen just sold for one hundred and thirty dollars. Wow. And. Courier Crisis, hundred and fifty dollars, and I think that box cost me thirty or forty dollars for all six games. Wow! And then how how long have you been sitting on it? Those I've been sitting on for a while. Um, I, I I bought them knowing that the the games are going to go up in value. I was selling them a lot cheaper. Nobody was buying them when they were fifty dollars. So I would, you know, instead of listing, the biggest mistake a lot of people make is I'll buy because I had like. 12 copies of each game or so. They list quantity 12 at one price. And so I was like, oh, I'm not going to buy it. I think it's got 12 of them. I'll come back. So I started doing with a lot of the games, you list one of them. And everyone's like, well, there's one up there. It's $150. Yeah. And then no. now it builds that anticipation. You know, do I want it or not? And once it sells, once and I ship it, yeah, sell similar. Yeah. Because if you, 
and then, you know, because it gets your watches back and all that stuff. Yeah, then, then you're kind of competing with yourself in a way, yeah. That's very smart. Yeah. It kind of reminds me, though, of, like, how we have clothes that we wore when we were, like, in high school that are now vintage and cool again. So, like, we could pull it out of our closet and list it on Depop. And mm -hmm. it's, it's like, you know, things are cyclical. So what yeah. was new and exciting at one point then lost favor and now is cool because it's retro. I told you I found a whole box, a, a Rubbermaid bin of my... 90s and early 2000s jeans. I have a whole thing of them. And I was going to get rid of They just never got donated. They're still here at my parents' house. And I, it's like gold, you know, because now they're they're desirable. Oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so where do you find most of your items? Where do you source most of your items? Do you go to thrift stores, uh, state sales, flea markets, uh, online? What do you usually... When I was selling at the flea markets, I would sell a lot of computers. And what I would do for, for the computer side of the business, um, I would go to pawn shops and I would buy their broken laptops. Mm -hmm. I, they would look at them first and see what's wrong with them. Sometimes it's just a bad hard drive. So I'd know how much a hard drive would cost and I get it fairly cheap. Um, but, you know, I'd, I'd be able to pick up a laptop for $25, spend $15, $20 on a hard drive and boom, I have a hard video laptop. Um, video games... There are many places you can go. Um, the thrift stores are usually used to be a great place for them, but now in my area, some of them are going e-commerce only for video games. Oh yeah. Um, garage garage sales and estate sales um, online. There are a lot of people who buy from Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, Offer Up, or Let Go, whatever they call themselves now, Craigslist, um, and they flip. Um, some people actually flip right on the same site, which I think is kind of lame. I mean, you know, someone actually bought a yeah. Nintendo for someone for $125 boxed and used the same picture as he was pulling out in the parking lot and listed with his picture at $200. It's like, what? Well, you didn't even leave his place and you already flipped. You already yeah. So it's, but online, um, for, vi yeah, for video games, for electronics, the thrift stores is a great place for electronics. Um, yeah. Let's see. The pawn shops are actually a great source. If you know, I mean, you have to. The thing is, you have to be able to test things. Mm -hmm. But pawn shops are a good place. Um, you have to look at your church rummage sales. Uh, uh, it's, a lot of people forget about those. We have a mm -hmm. we have a church rummage sale that has incredible finds. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, um, okay, does this? Somewhat, uh, I'm trying to think, but uh, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of good places, a lot of nook and, nook and cranny places that you can find, um, or unexpected places. Like I never even thought about going to Once Upon a Child for to for board games or. Oh toys. yeah, yeah. That's Someone else mentioned it. And I'm like, who thought? Who I thought it was clothing. Yep. So it's really about getting getting creative, and it sounds like also if you're buying a computer, like a laptop that you need to repair that one item is going to flip for quite a bit. So you don't need to be thinking about huge quantities. You could be thinking about smaller numbers of items. You know, when, it came, you know, when it came to laptops, uh, my thing, when I was at the flea market, I would offer 90 day warranty, one year, uh, uh, 90 day hardware, one year labor warranties. So I would guarantee everything I sold. And the idea was mm -hmm. if I take it, I test it, I make sure it works. You're going to, you know, you're going to get something that works. If it doesn't work, I'm going to fix it for you. Because um, you know, I want to stand behind what I sold, including the game systems. You buy a Nintendo, a Nintendo 64, a Dreamcast, whatever. If it doesn't work, bring it back. I'll give you another one, or I'll fix it. Because I want I want the customer happy. It's not mm -hmm. about you know I don't give cash refunds, but it's guaranteeing the product. Um, and that's something you know you have to set yourself apart. Even online, when you're selling clothing, your pictures make you different from your competitors. Absolutely. When I, you know, I, I, I look at other flea market vendors where some guy's selling computers, some guy was buying the broken junk that I buy, I repair him. He's not. He just takes a sticker off, puts it on a table at an outdoor market and says, oh, it works great. It's broken. Because I know, I know I had some of the same customers came in and told me what he was doing. And I said, well, yeah, it's the same stuff I, you know, I could buy, but I fix them. So yeah. you, your competitor tell, you know, determines how you should, you know, what you should do to make yourself a step up above them, so to speak. And so yeah. everything I sold works. I won't sell broken stuff. People That's ask good. all the time when I have broken systems. Like I, have, I have probably 40 broken Xboxes. If I can't fix them, they're going to sit here. I'm not going to sell them broken. 
someone will come back and say, you sell broken stuff and I get a bigger reputation. Well, that also just sounds like you're asking for an INET on, on eBay. Yeah. Like, and you're probably leaving a lot of money on the table if you just say untested, you know, you just heard yeah. yeah, that's kind of silly. Um, how do you uh, test your items? Like, are there any things that you recommend us, like people bringing to the thrift stores, like have an assortment of batteries on hand yeah. or is there anything, I know you've mentioned that you test some items in your car. Can you tell us about how you do that? Yeah, if, you're gonna, if you meet someone locally, I, I don't have it here, but is I have a power inverter for my car. It's two outlets and a box that plugs into the cigarette lighter. So basically, I have an LCD TV, and I can plug in a laptop, or I can plug in uh, a game system to, to hook up to the TV and test it in my car. Um, when it comes to things, Bolo items, Walkman, I've got two Sony Walkmans here, and you know, those cassette ones too. They're really simple to test. Actually, the same model. What do you know? Um, <laughs> You, bring, you carry double A batteries and triple A batteries with you. You want the batteries, yeah, you know, like with remotes. You want you know remotes sell, and some remotes are worth a fortune. You want to make sure the remote works. The other thing you want is a cheap pair of headphones. Just mm -hmm. have yourself either earbuds or headphones. Plug it in here. How many times do you go to a thrift store and they have a CD? So all you do is you grab a CD, pop it in here, and you turn point. it on, yeah. and you make sure it actually plays. You, you know, you don't. Think, who cares what the CD is? You hear the music, it spins, it works fine. Um, I've sold, these cost about $5 each. I've sold them between $25 and $35. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. And I've heard that Walkman, I know like the yellow sports Walkman can do really well. I know that one is a Bolo. Um, but I, I guess any, like do the cassette ones do, do lesser than, or does it matter on the brand or? Model. 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 Um, Yes, yeah, so if you have Sony, and Sony's one of the better brands. I mean, you know, your, your Emerson or your Tozai, your no name brands, worthless for most part. Sony, okay. um, you know, you have, to, you have to look it up. Again, the eBay seller app, the Amazon app are, are, are great. Um, you know, I, I bought the Sharp Boom Box that's up there. I, I keep it for the for the office here. I bought one for downstairs. Um, I have a Sony downstairs I picked up that I didn't test the cassette deck, and the cassette deck has a problem. But when I fix the cassette deck, it sells for $200. Wow. There's a bigger version. It's bigger than this. It's, you know, it's a big square. The you know the big boombox kind of the ghetto blaster. But it's also I I that's why I bought it. It was ten dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are ways to fix the cassette deck that I don't know yet. I gotta. That's my research. But for the price, I use it downstairs listening to CDs. And I, again, I just just like Jason has said about his music. I don't test every CD I sell either. But pop in a CD before I you know if I want to listen to it. I can hear some new music. So, you know, you get use out of the boombox. It tests out the boombox. And you can sell it. And those these people buy these things like crazy. They put them in the garage or wherever. Um, so they're they're great sales. So funny. I definitely had one of those like in my room as a teenager, and I'm sure it got donated at some point. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, we I, we could travel back in time. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that that we'd uh, get now and and uh, sell. Um, I I do have a question about um, so so someone like me who has no knowledge of te of uh, testing things of fixing things I'm obviously not going to be taking apart like um, a motherboard on a computer and rebuilding it you know that's kind of out of my but having said that if I wanted to you know if I would, were to buy like a broken let's say I have a broken Walkman or something and I want to fit are there like for someone like me how hard is it to watch like a YouTube tutorial and try to figure out some basic Basic things it, it can can people like me fix um, do some basic repairs if just by watching YouTube videos or how do you how do you learn that kind because of, I know for you it's probably years of knowledge you know well I was wondering the comes, exact same thing when it comes to Walkman I haven't done those yet those are a little more tricky some of them are easy some of them um, where's my okay I have a prop here good I have, I have props all over the place, but for CDs, this is not the one that I normally use. This is a Maxell lens cleaner. There is another one that I use by Scotch that talks and, and helps. Um, it'll tell you, you know, push this for this. And when it spins, it cleans the laser and there's no solution to it. It just has brushes on the bottom. A little, a little thing of which you obviously can't see, you know, uh, a little line of brushes. And sometimes this will help a laser. Mm -hmm. If this works, great. And it's actually done, done wonders for me on certain things that are just a little dirty because a lot of times it's just nothing serious. If you're going to go to YouTube to try to do stuff, be very careful. 
because okay. you have this group over here that are going to help you, but you got mm -hmm. this group over here that want to see you fail and put up jokes. Or um, one guy was doing a video. A friend of mine was watching. He was he was goofing about taking the government chip out of your cell phone, and he pulled out the rumble. He was just screwing with people, just making funny videos. But you know, there's someone out there that watched the video and took their phone yeah. apart and ripped out their rumble because they didn't, they didn't see the humor behind it. But so YouTube's a great source for trying to figure out repair for repairing or cleaning your stuff. Walkman I haven't done yet. That's I'm gonna do my boombox this summer. Um, when it comes to video game systems, there's a lot of information, including cleaning kits. Um, you never blow on a cartridge because when you're blowing, it's oxygen and moisture. You're spitting basically on the cartridge. You're oxidizing it. You want to use isopropyl alcohol that's at least 90 percent preferably and hydrous isopropyl alcohol but that's about 15 dollars a bottle so you just use 92 percent you get at the store for two dollars little q-tip clear it off and most of the time that'll keep it perfect yeah i think that's exactly what i ended up doing uh to clean out the um the um battery on this it was just yep. Q-tip, and i think I, I ended up using vinegar <clears throat> maybe i should try alcohol because it there's definitely still a little bit left, so I can. Yeah, there, is a battery corrosion is that a deal breaker? Like if you see something that has a lot of corrosion in it, because I know a lot of a lot of things have been sitting around for years, might be sitting with their batteries, and I don't. Look, yeah, I don't let corrosion bother me. I know corrosion's a pain. Personally, I've had I've had good luck. I haven't really used too much. I've even used you know just like a Windex or something. Just because mm -hmm. most of the corrosion comes out easily, but there are better ways to clean out corrosion. Um, there, there was someone who posted something in one of the groups of, of uh, I forgot what they said, but they use something um, and it, just, it cleans the corrosion up perfectly. It just cleans everything. You know, it's just a little work. It's like getting a stain out of a shirt. You, you do it. You know, you go slow and do it right. You know, it, it'll come out. Corrosion is not the only time corrosion is bad is if you're looking at something and the wires are corroded. Um, okay, so we got like the Xbox system, uh, which you can't hear. I'll move this. An original Xbox system has got a a capacitor in there with a little thing on the motherboard that's a little capacitor mm -hmm. that leaks. Mm -hmm. So most video game collectors will open the system up, cut the capacitor, and just remove it. And what it is, it's a clock capacitor. So when you, normally, if you have an Xbox, it has date and time, and if you keep it plugged in, it'll never ask that. They cut the capacitor, so every time you turn it on, it's going to ask you date and time. But that capacitor leaks, and if it leaks, it can damage the motherboard, and now you lost your system. Okay. So, so, so it's, a, it's a minor inconvenience, but it'll keep it running much, much yeah. longer without it. Yeah, um, um, we have some great comments in the chat. So Angelique says, "Look at the YouTube video yeah. comments. Great tip. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, that's true. Um, and Heather has a couple questions for you. So <laughs> she would like to know: um, Have you always had a good head for business, or did you learn from your dad, or was it something you learned in college? Maybe a combo. Uh, my college degree is actually in marketing. Oh, okay. Well, they didn't have computers when I was in college. The year I graduated, they added computers. So it's like I was before this wow. entire thing. Um, and marketing, what well, they didn't tell me, which, you know, nice at the university, an entry level position in marketing requires two years of experience. How do you get two years of experience? Yeah. So that you need to have an internship. Well, they didn't yep. tell you that. So it's like it, marketing just didn't, you know, it just, Unless you know that, you know, that you need the internship for two years experience, you're not going to get into marketing. Um, and when I got into computers, it was kind of funny. I had a friend who told me about a job. Uh, we went to a temp agency and one of the world's largest computer distributors had, conf had a config center right where I lived. And they wanted techs. And I didn't know anything, but they trained you. It was really simple. And uh, back then it was just turning the computer on, deciding if you wanted Windows 95 or 2000 putting in a CD-ROM drive, you know, basic stuff, and they showed you how to do it. Um, I went from being a, just a, a tech, uh, from a temp, from a basic temp, they hired me, uh, became a tech too, and I became a senior technician and a group leader. Um, I wrote, I was part of the IBM AAP program. I wrote build instructions, um, or we became ISO 9000 certified. And of course, then they decided to move to Memphis and lost everything we did. But um, yeah. I basically... I learned from one of the world's largest computer distributors. Um, you know, something I did not know before is the, you know, the computer. I just kept learning from there. So it was nothing I learned from school. 
Yeah. So it's all, it's mostly, um, yeah. But and, so do you think any of the marketing education you had like helped you when you were getting into eBay and kind of learning how to market the stuff you're selling or is it just like totally different selling person to person versus like a corporate environment? In some ways it's different because the marketing they teach you is was pre-internet. Um, so mm -hmm. they're teaching you marketing as, you know, for like businesses without the internet. And once you have the internet, you know, have different kind of, you have social media marketing. I mean, a lot of the things that we have now are completely different from what, I, what I've ever learned. So um, your typical marketing, like making flyers and signs and promoting your business locally, um, you know, remembering to use, like I use Buku. Uh, so when I was at, what, one of the things, I, what, like what I did so when I was at the flea market, I would use Craigslist, Buku, Letco, OfferUp, and Wallapop. I'd list my laptops. But in the but see, using your brain, I would say on the weekends I'm at Wolf's Flea Market Saturdays and Sundays AM to 4 p.m. And I'd lose my space number, and people would actually come in and say, "Yeah, I saw your post on uh, Let Go or wherever. What laptops do you have?" So basically, I used the degree, you know, the marketing degree, to pull people into the building, and I sold hundreds of laptops because of that. So see, uh, it does yes. And I'm sure it helps even now with, um, you know, with selling online and customer service and whatnot, and you know, mm -hmm. trying to get get people to uh, to buy from you and whatnot. So, um, what I've learned from most people, yeah, from, from what I learned from most people is back in the day when I was on Half.com, the discussion board was all negative. Um, mm -hmm. I I got strategy guides from GameStop when they pennied them out. Store managers would just give them to me, and I said, well, how do you list books? And people were giving me bad advice and flagging all my listings. Now with everybody, with you know, with, with you and with Jason and with Craig and everyone, everyone's all positive and helping each other out. And so oh, yeah. I've learned over the time, I have pre-built like these replies. Like someone says, my package didn't arrive. So I've learned, you know, again, marketing. I'm sorry to hear your package has not arrived. I will be more than glad to check with your post. I have these basically pre-built things that I always know what, what to say. You filter out the negativity, that, you know, the anger they have. And I know, you know, you, you reply, and so far I've had extremely happy customers. Um, I try to thank everyone in less than 30 minutes. Did I get, an, get I a message? So you, you learned that you got to respond to someone fast, and it diffuses any situation or most situations. Yeah. It helps to be mobile, too, to have, um, I don't know how people work without a smartphone, you know, or, <laughs> or mobile, because I know my uncle, he's, he's, he's older, you know, but he sells online, and he was at my house and he's like, Oh darn, I have to get back to this, this person. But he doesn't, he, he just got a smartphone. I'm like, Oh my gosh, you need to be able to, cause he's like, Oh, I have to go back home to my computer to reply to this person. And I'm like, no, you have a smartphone. You need to, you need to be able to. So it, it does help though. When you have, um, when you have that at your fingertips, somebody messages you, you're in the middle of the grocery store or something. You can, <laughs> you know, give them customer service, you know? So yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think maybe, um, I just wanted to cut to your store. Um, and I wanted to know, like, I mean, specifically some, some of the, so I, when I go to your store, um, here, I see that you have a lot of video games. Um, I have to go back to, sorry to get that back to that window since I'm working off of one. Hold on a second. I lost my window. Okay, here we go. So yeah, so you have a lot of video games there. I can see that looks like what you sell the most of. Am I right? Or well, most of my inventory that I'm getting rid of. Yeah, it's okay. Um, what do you, what do you sell the What is your best selling item as far as electronics, computers, video games? What what do you sell the most of? What it what um what do you find to be your biggest scores? You have so many Let's video see. games listed. My goodness. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay. Biggest. Okay. Back. If we go a couple of years ago, because it's all changed now, I was sending out Wii systems, PlayStation 2s, and Xboxes like crazy. Mm -hmm. in, uh, um, in, 2000, in, well, in 2007, actually, I was selling so many Skull Candy headphones on Amazon <laughs> that. Yeah, I had I had so much coming in. Um, I basically almost had no place to sleep. I was getting in packages daily. I was shipping out daily. I oh actually paid off all my debt other than my house back in two thousand. Oh, and of course, we had the two thousand eight crash. But um, 
I paid off all my all my bills thanks to Skull Candy headphones. Um, that was my one of my biggest. But then they then they gated their product. They decided to price fix their items, and mm. they told me they don't want me to sell anymore. Video games, like this stuff's all from the flea market. The stuff that I had purchased. Um, now there yeah, are other ways to get video games. So many listed. Wow. One of the things that I did is uh, there was a chain called Game Crazy, which is part of Hollywood Video. Mm-hmm. They they were the game video game store inside of Hollywood Video, and they did not know how to price things apparently because they would have these sales and I was buying really uh, good games, cheap, you know, new sealed games, cheap. And I bought them and I put them in a tote, bought them, put them in a tote. Um, at one point, actually, I don't have it here, but I have it um, in the other room. They had a bundle. It was a Game Boy Advance system with the e-reader for seven ninety nine, new in box. And I was selling the systems back then for twenty nine ninety nine used. So if I couldn't find a used one. I would just buy a new one. Now I have one left, and it sells for five hundred dollars. Wow! That so, is and that you can still find some games. For people wondering, if you go to, I, I did actually go to a, an independent thrift store, and they had about a dozen Game Boy Advance games that were still factory sealed, sitting on the shelf. Wow! Oh. Someone, if someone donated them, and I went through, and again, smartphones. If someone mentioned smartphones, you have yeah. the Amazon and eBay app. You know, you yeah, just go up, exactly. scan, and I'd be like, taking this one, I'm taking this one, I'm taking And some of them have sold for $200. Wow. So if you find a sealed game on a thrift store shelf, it's not necessarily a home run just because it's sealed. But you definitely should should check it out. Is that is that the, yes. the rule of one? Yeah, this anything. One. Wow. So that's a brand new one. Yeah, it was new and sealed. That, that's a Super Nintendo game. It's a rarer game. The shrink gap is uh, is damaged. Um, mm-hmm. I've had several offers on it. One person wanted to pay me two hundred and fifty, but he never got back to me. Um, but I know it's. I know that one goes up in price. Um, I actually do have a game. I can't get to it. It's downstairs in my collection called Magical Chase. Mm-hmm. Magical Chase for Turbo Graphics sixteen. I have a sealed copy of it. And at last, now it's part of my collection. I'm only missing one game from the entire TurboGrafx-16 library. But if I ever find it used, I'm going to sell my new one. And someone, last time I mentioned I had a new one, the offer I received was $10,000. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's like a car. So yeah, so it's like, you know, that's how rare that game is. I have it. I mean, TurboGrafx games are, see, I got really lucky at a distributor in Florida. I picked up Sonic Spike. And I didn't just pick up one copy, but he had basically an entire skid full of Sonic Spike. I, I, he shipped it to me from Florida, and I am now down to about 10% of what I had. They've been selling, I mean, like crazy. Wow. Little by wow. little. And all, the, all these games, oh, you're showing out Turbo Graphics games. The collectors will buy them. I just had, um, I had someone buy eight games on Mercari. And, uh, you know, this is it's a rare or since, oh, matter of fact, it's also a bolo. If you ever see, Turbo Graphics 16 is a bolo. If you see the system, don't worry if it works or not. Oh, I'll lower it and block me. If you see the system, you don't you don't have to worry if it works because there are people who will fix it. You know, there are bad capacitors in the Turbo Graphics 16. There's also a handheld version called the Turbo Express. Same thing. These will, if you turn on, it's got a white screen. Turn it on, it doesn't have sound. There are people who can fix it. They'll, they'll open it, replace the capacitors for you. I have five Turbo Graph 16s and three Expresses that need repair. But you're talking over $200 for that system and three, four, five hundred for the Express, depending on what, what you've got with it. So, okay, so you ever see those? I've never heard of this system before. Is this, it's not like a Nintendo or, or a Sega or a, is it its, its own company? Yeah, it was made by NEC back in the day of uh, Sega Genesis um, and, and that era of like 1990. Um, and I can't cheat and read a date. Can I read a date code? Around 1990, the games, mm-hmm. most of the games are on hoop cards, which is a little piece of plastic like a credit card. And the chip is actually in here. That's but this wild. is, the, those are the games. The yeah. hacking game was Keith Courage. So most, this is the one that everyone has. But those games, um, most of the games that you're seeing that are you know, the Turbo Graphics box games, that's the, you know the, a lot of collectors. It's one of the. It's just a sought after system. It was a. It's kind of like the Dreamcast was arcade perfect for its time. Turbo Graphics was incredible for its time. Um, Japanese version is called PC Engine, 
And there were tons of games for that system. It just, a lot of people liked, uh, matter of fact, the t-shirt they have over there that you can see in the corner of Devil's Crush is a Turbo Graphics t-shirt. So, um, so you mentioned the Japanese system. Are collectors in the U.S. also interested in, in, yes. in uh, even, I'm guessing it's probably, you can't plug it in here easily, but like collectors will figure it out or they'll just use it for display. I think you can get a, a was it, a, there's a signal inverter or something like that. There are, because I, I have a Japanese, uh, a Famicom, which is a Nintendo. Mm -hmm. I've never been able to get it working either, but there is a way to hook them up. Um, the the imports, the, the funny thing is, there's a game that I need called Sid Mead's Terraforming, which is the last game for the U.S. lineup I need, that right now is around $500 in the U.S. $65 for the Japanese version. I have the Japanese version, but I, it was like, I want the U.S. version. But the Japanese games don't have the same, not all of them, a lot of them don't have the same value. But mm -hmm. people still want them because there are people who are trying to collect the entire system. Okay. So video games, that's why video games can be fun, because there are people that will want to collect everything. And if you find something new in box, you might actually, you know, it might not be a game you think is the best of games, but if you scan it, um, like I found, um, was it Zelda Link, I think it was for Nintendo, for $5 at Goodwill. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I have to look it up. I think I sold it for $1,000 on Amazon. What? Wow. It was a... Yeah, you know, I posted about it. Um, it was sold a while ago, but I swear, I think it was sold for like nine ninety nine. Um, eh, my email there it is, but I'll take a quick peek. But um, let's see if it works. But yeah, there are games that are that you know, there are games that do hold that kind of value because. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it's not going to be easy to search, is it? It's yeah, okay. Two, there it is. Zelda 2, Adventures of Link. Sold for nine ninety nine ninety five. Wow. So, Keep yeah, there are, there are games so, you know, that you... Are there any rule of thumbs? Like, I know Zelda has a big following as a series, a video game series. Do, like, do series tend to do better? Or does it not really... Is there not really a rhyme or reason that like there could be a one-off game that has a huge cult following? Oh, it's a little of everything. I mean, there are certain yeah. games that you would not expect um, are worth money, and there are certain games uh, there are certain games that just because it's sealed, um, mm -hmm. the value has gone up there. Um, and then, of course, there are certain games that they're sealed, but they made so many copies of that are worthless. Um, Final Fantasy. Is you know a, a sought after series, sealed certain versions, like the especially Super Nintendo, are mm -hmm. are of course going to be worth a lot of money. But then again, for PlayStation, um, they re they reissued the game so many times that Final Fantasy VII mm -hmm. used to be a fifty dollar game, but it keeps dropping because they keep you know every time they reissue and push them out there, um, some of the game they do end up dropping, and then there were then there were some bad versions on PS2 that didn't sell well. Hmm. So, it, you know that's why you know with, with the Amazon or eBay app, your your smartphone is your friend. I mean, every, yep. almost every video game has this barcode. So you just go up and you scan, scan. Yeah, you don't have to know a lot about you know because yeah, that's why you need the smartphone. I, I definitely. I is, did you did you guys Angelique in the chat says that she does not have a smartphone. Yeah, I know. Poor Angelique never been about that, but yeah, but I know it's, I don't know how you would. I just, I, I'm such a millennial at, at this point in my life. I have had a cell phone since I was in like seventh grade. I cannot imagine not having a smartphone. Angelique, I hope you get one soon and you'll have to report back about how your thrifting changes when you get yes. stuff in the store. For sure. That's, um, I wanted to go back to Brian's store a little bit and just um, show. So it. So you have some interesting categories here. I noticed. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to. Oh, it's fun to do this with one. Well, no, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> sorry. Um. Uh. uh okay. I think, you're, I think you're too far ahead. Are these? Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I, I just can't look at, I just have to look at this screen and not the other one. 
Oh, it's fun doing it with one screen. Uh, so I wanted to say that you have some interesting categories. So I see that you have video games, video game accessories, which is what we're in now. You have um, computer accessories. So um, I see that you have, you know, like some of the hard cases and whatnot there. Um, and then your electronics are, you have some interesting listings here, I noticed. Um, I'm surprised these, so these headphones, I don't know if I would know to pick these up necessarily. You know, I wouldn't necessarily think they would sell for $70. That's amazing though. Um, all but I guess they're new in package. Brand. Yeah, so they're new in package. So that's something that, you know, you definitely have to look for, I guess, you know, and, and then here, a shaver, you know, a charger. So this is again in the aisle of all the cords. We had a froggy flips on a while ago, and he was talking about like the the cords, you know, <laughs> those that section and, a lot of and yeah. And I usually skip over those, but you know, you never know because I bet you didn't pick this up for much, right? Like I bet you probably didn't pay a lot for it. No, I think it was two dollars, and I, ironically, I bought it because I couldn't find mine. Okay, and uh, then I found mine and. It was sealed when I bought it, but you know how plastic is. But it is new, and you know it, it, those people do need those. I mean, like I said, I lost mine, so obviously there was a need. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, so that's definitely something that you don't want to skip over, and I often will skip over. Like in my, I know in my old Goodwill, it was like in usually in a basket, and there's just a big basket of just tangled cords and stuff in there. And then these are inter. I see that these are car speakers. This is something I might have taken a second glance at because it's you know it's new in box and all. So what did you pay for this? I think it was seven or eight. It wasn't that much. It was like seven ninety nine. Wow. Just, yeah. But there's been no interest, which was surprised me. I thought really, uh, I'm surprised because they look like something that uh, that would do, yeah. But now that's something I'd probably be. Now another thing that I see that you sell, and I'm, I'm very interested in, is because this this kind of borders what Lola and I sell too. Is you sell a lot of video game apparel. So um, you ha I see you have some amazing. Now this is oh, fine. That's yeah, four hundred. Can you tell us about this? Because <laughs> It, 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 is, it is new. Um, I did watch an auction. Right before I listed it, an auction sold at $450. Wow. So I saw the auction sell. So I said, well, if an auction is going to sell for $450, i am listing mine. And people have offered me $50 or $100. But I was like, you know what? If no, someone's paying $450 off. at an auction, yeah. I'm gonna, I'll, let it, I'll just let it ride. So what did you pay for this? I don't I, – honestly, I don't know if I paid for – most of the shirts I got from either the video game show – Mm -hmm. or uh, for my distributors. Okay. I don't think I paid for any of the shirts. And didn't you find one? I know a while back you were talking about you found something in a blue box too, didn't you? Uh, or am I remembering wrong? I thought you had found... Uh, maybe it uh, wasn't a shirt. Yeah, I don't know, that video game apparel, but I, I, I found some I found funny stuff. In, but I'm not, yeah, that maybe it was. I might be thinking, but, but yeah, but these, some of these shirts, I can't believe, you know, they can really do well too. It looks like, so that's so, another thing to like a, an adjacent um, area to look for in the thrift store. Yeah. But there's the, uh, the, a lot of people don't think about it, but there's uh, video games. have a couple different adjacent areas and like, I got these Sonic the Hedgehog shot glasses. Oh, that's fun. And so, you know, oh, you know, someone's going to yeah. want, Someone's going to want, you know, the four mini, well, they don't call them shot glasses, mini glasses, <laughs> but um, someone's going to want those. And then, now these are mine, but other thing, because it's, video games take so much, memory, Super Mario edition. Okay. Wow. Monopoly. See, like, there, there's so many things that are, yeah. There's, only two, there's, there's another one that I don't have. But the thing is, the reason why smartphones are important, as you said, as I look this up, the monopolies go for a good amount of, you know, that's all monopolies you need to look at, um, all the funny ones. But, oh, I forgot, it's not going to, oh, there's, this one says is $130 on Amazon. But Amazon's wow. getting rid of most monopolies. And the other one is not listed because I think they're well, they're, they're pulling a lot of toys licensing. I'd go mm -hmm. on eBay if you ever saw. Be very careful with Monopoly on Amazon. Go on eBay. Really? Or you might get a. Yeah, if they're doing a lot of um, intellectual property warnings. Yeah, I don't sell on Amazon, but that's good to know for people that do. Yeah. Wow. 
very cool. That, yeah, that is very cool. Um, so yeah, so yeah. so many things that you don't think about that are related. Related. I have a couple have questions a couple for you about some of my video. I have a few, just just a few video game listings, and I just wanted to ask your expert opinion on those. Um, let me pull them up. Let's see. Okay. So this one I have here. I just got this. Um, I actually just got this on Thrift to You, and I a dollar again. Just got it yesterday, and I was surprised that this game that I paid a buck for actually sells for this much. So um it seems like and this is used i mean the case is you know it's got some wear but the disc itself is in really good condition and it looks like it sells for a solid 40 to 50 dollars every day so um i listed mine for this is my listing i just listed it last night and i know my picture could be better i just i just took a quick picture in my driveway so i know not the best background but um <clears throat> but i wanted to get it listed for the show today so um but I listed it for $49.95 um, with, with the best offer and um, hopefully it'll sell. So what do you think about that? Oh, that's cool. Cause I've never heard of that. That's, that's, really? it's really cool finding something. Is that something you might be able to find if you go to the thrift store in the CD section? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point to look there. So hopefully I'm hoping that it it looks like it sells pretty, pretty quickly and pretty well. I mean, I just listed it literally like one o'clock in the morning or something last night. So, <laughs> I just wanted to get it up there before the show, but um, hopefully, you know, I'll get, I put it up for 50, you know, thinking I'll take an offer of 40, um, no less than 40 probably. And then this one I have listed, I can't sell this one for anything. Again, excuse my pictures, my video game pictures are not the best, but, um, but I can't sell this one for anything. And I don't know why it was just a bad game or I got it. Like I picked it up for like a buck and I don't even remember when, or I've had it for a while and I, I listed a while ago, but I have it down to 1495, no offers, no lookers, nothing. If it's just a dead game. It might just be a, a game nobody wants or is so old because this is windows 95 that people have gone. I mean, sooner or later you might find a buyer for it, but there are so many games put out that nobody really looks for. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're going to look for the games to really look for, if you find Commodore 64, Vic 20, you know, the, the, those kind of games, um, old Atari or um, Apple II games. You want to hear games that's going to blow your mind? I still have a Commodore 128 computer. What? My dad, my dad was a big fan of Commodore. We started with Vic 20, went to Commodore mm -hmm. 64, 128, the yeah, Luggable. In my garage, I have his Luggable. I have the 128, the 64. I have a C64. I have a VIC-20. Um, we were in a Commodore users group. So, yeah, I, it's there's a big support group for, um, for Commodore. Cartridges I still and have discs. the games, too, for Commodore 128. So I wonder. I should get those out. I bet they're worth something. Um, the computer technically and the games. my mom because she paid for them back then, you know, and, <laughs> and her house. So I'd have to get her approval. To you probably be fine getting rid of them, though, especially if I, you could sell them. But I bet they, they would be worth yeah. something. So, but, and then this is my final game that I can't sell for anything. I have it up there for, oh, I did sell it. I'm sorry. I did sell it once. Yeah. And then the buyer um, messaged me that they bought it by mistake and they wanted to cancel. So I had to Aww. cancel. But um, is this just, do I have it priced too high? Is it just a dud game? Is it just... Like, I got one, this free, by the way. I paid nothing for it, so. There was only one NCAA game that's worth anything. I believe it was NCAA, was it 14? Okay. Um, because that was the last year they made the games, so people are paying outrageous amounts for them. Every other year, you can find them for two bucks at any thrift store. Every year. Um, My Good Wills only have, that's the only game they put on the shelves. The rest of them go to the e-commerce. Yeah. So you can find free so i mean you know i just put it up there and i like i said i sold it once and then they canceled the sale but maybe i should just lower the price to like 10 bucks or something i don't know or is you, it just you can, you can try to drop it down that or yeah 9.99 or best offer and just see who takes it and just get rid of it yeah um, i mean i got it for free that's why i put it up there but um or if you want to just put it on the side if you get a bunch of games bundle a bunch of sports games mm -hmm. together oh that's um, a good idea yeah because one of the best things about video games is if you go to a garage sale and someone's got a game system, you you can't act, you know, oh, I want this. You go there and like, oh, you got that. Uh, if I buy everything, can you run me a deal? And they might, you know, they might say, because I've had that happen where they said a price on this, price on this, price. They said, ah, 50 for everything. I said, okay. 
And now you have everything. And now you, you put all your lots, you know, the, the junk, the junk together and boom, that now you, you know, that's how you get rid of the lower end titles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's um, exactly what I do with sewing patterns. <laughs> it's totally the same. That's true. That's the same strategy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so going back to this, I know I showed it when I was going through your shirts, but you wanted to talk about this specifically um, as well. Glover was one of my best selling shirts. Um, that actually was a, I think a target pack in, it came in a cardboard box, like you the pre-order game. You get the oh, shirt, you pre-order yeah. the game. Somehow, I don't know where I got them from. I had a bunch of them in a plastic. They were taped in a plastic. I ended the box. I sold, I think, eight of those shirts. Um, I think I have one left. The, wow. My display shirts are up for sale now. And uh, the, you know, the, the thing about video game shirts, just like concert shirts, just just go to eBay, look them up because I, I couldn't believe, what, you know, in the spring or you know, when the or late winter, early spring, when I decided, let's list the, let's find a list of these things that I've had in the box for years, just sitting doing nothing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe the prices that they were going for. I you know I, there were a few that I they severely underpriced because I sold the day you know, like half an hour after I listed them. But the you can get if you have you know, they're, 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 remember these are the ones that I'm listing here are all new or you know, basically new shirts, but the used ones can still get a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Some of the used shirts can go for even more than this. I bet even if they have like holes or damage because they're so sought after by collectors that it doesn't matter. I mean, it, I bet I bet they won't sell for as much, but I know with some of those shirts, you can still sell them if they have, if you disclose it. Yeah, like, depending on the franchise, like Final Fantasy, uh, Metal Girl Solid, mm -hmm. depending on, you know, if it's a if it's a role-playing game franchise or if it's a, like, like going back to TurboGrafx-16, one of the collectors has his own Facebook group and he bought a NEC TurboGrafx jacket. Some One of the employees sold his old jacket. And a jacket like that, I mean, you find something like that that's that out there that very few people are going to have. Yes, you're going to, you know. And I made a mistake, speaking of clothing, I've, I was at a Goodwill and I saw a Chicago White Sox jacket, World Series jacket from 2005. Mm -hmm. It was extra large. So I said, ah, it's extra large. I'm large. Well, oh, dumb no. old me. Wasn't thinking resell. I was thinking, yeah. you know, that's five. Yeah. And it's it's a sell for about two hundred dollars. But I figured, you know, it didn't fit me. It's too big. So always look things up. <laughs> yep. Right. Play. Yep. And we've all made that mistake. All yep. of us have done that. And yep. that's exactly the kind of item where it's hit or miss. It could be that sought after one, or it could be a dud that nobody cares about. And it's a player, or you know, especially like jerseys, like it's a player nobody cares about versus it's the jersey that people are still paying two hundred dollars for. So, exactly. yeah. So, do you want to tell us about this one? Because this, yeah, this... yes, yeah, another one that also sold. I saw two of those. Um, again, another another video game shirt. That one doesn't look. I mean, to me, it doesn't look that exciting. It's just Ridge Racer Type Four, but they both sold fast. Um, you know, it, I personally, I never thought that. You know, until I found out the concert T-shirts would sell, I didn't think the video game shirts would be worth this much either. Mm -hmm. They're just, you know. And this one's got a stain, as you see, not a stain, but it's got yeah, a... Yeah, I see that, yeah. I don't know what that was. I put a mark or something that's not going to come out, yeah. yeah. I pull out of the box, I'm like, why is it discolored? What's the discoloration from? But, the, but people said, I don't care, I want it. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I think, again, always be honest with your customer. I always went, um, anytime it was a problem, because, like, the one game, the Hexen game I had, these, the, the game board, the plastic on that Saturn game, let's go over there, has little dots. The shrink wrap, they have little dots in it. And it was sitting in the box, and somehow dirt got in it. So I told him, would you like to see some pictures? This one's a little, you know, the, the, I didn't realize this before. It was sitting in the box. It was dirty. I sent him pictures, and the, they were a person in Canada. And they said, no complaints, no discount, no nothing. They said, yeah, I want the game. Send it. Wow. So, you know, disclosing these kind of issues, people still bought them. That's yep. great. Um, is there anything else that, um, wrapping it up and going to our other segments, is there anything else? And I'll show some more of your solds, um, in a minute, but is there anything else that we missed or that you want to add or any other questions in the chat? Let, let me uh, show people a few things real quick. Oh, sure. Yeah. Get some ideas. Um, I never took, I never bought these guitar hero guitars and I never bought these. And then someone said that you can get these dirt cheap at thrift stores and they sound like crazy. And people ask, how do you ship them? Well, question. Priority wow. box. You just take, it comes right out. Wow. Goes, you, know, you, you pat it off, put it in a priority box. 
And these things sell, and some people say 20 bucks or so. You can pick them up for two bucks, three bucks, five bucks. You can get at least twenty dollars for those. That's something. That for, uh, um, when you're looking at thrift stores, this is my receipt. This is a uh, this is just a a funky game pad. And oh yeah, that's crazy. This thing's that's like an old school gamer pad. Yeah. It's yeah, it's program. Uh, I think it's programmable. But it's by Belkins with the name brand company. It works for Mac and PC. Mm -hmm. I paid five dollars for it, and I think it's at least sixty dollars. I haven't looked up in a while. Um, thing to keep an eye out for. Uh, fun bag. Now this is from my old stock, but if you ever see sealed controllers, I actually did buy an Xbox bundle from someone. It was an Xbox system with a bunch of controllers and games. They had one controller they never took out of the packaging. Sold it for one hundred and fifty dollars. This will sell for $150. Even in bad packaging, someone will pay $150 for this. Wow. When you're, when you're at the thrift store. And the is that just own. because, is it a collector's thing or is it people just know that it's going to be in really good condition if it's still in the box? And it's if, not it's like in the if it's in mint condition, if it's in mint condition, if this was in better packaging, it's a collector because he's going to put it in his case and never touch it. Mm -hmm. But some people want it because it actually, see the thing, the thumbstick is not going to be loose, it's going you know, to be tight. You know, when you play it, sometimes the rubber's missing. Yeah. The one thing about these, these are actually something you could repair yourself. You need a tri-wing bit. You could buy these two pieces, the thumbstick and the and the yellow pad on eBay, cheap. You take this, okay. it's, it's really simple. You unscrew it, take it out, replace the pads, put it together, boom, it's a brand new controller. So if you ever wow. get chewed up thumbsticks on these, PS2 is the worst. There, There's a cable in there. It, it's a nightmare. This and Xbox, you could replace the sticks like crazy. You have a brand new controller. The black Racing wheel for, or the, you know, the Wii wheel for the, is, is a harder one to get. The best part about this is if you're going to sell a Wii, sell the um, if you do it on Amazon or look up the bundle, you sell the Mario Kart bundle with the Wii with the with the wheel and the game. You're going to get about 120 dollars for the system because you got the wheel. And I found these two wheels new at Goodwill. And then wow, wow. Obviously, you know to look for calculators. Calculators are a bolo like crazy. If you find the right models, that one's new. You can find these. Hey, this I just pulled this up. I have another thing over there. Not going to worry about computer parts. This is an old seven-port hub for Mac. It's not on Amazon. It's not on eBay. But someone's got an old Mac. They want a powered USB hub. I can now list this higher. You know, I paid a couple bucks for it. I can list it for a lot higher because I have the only new one. No one else has got it. Another ball to look for. Believe it or not, this is the Timex. This, this I brought out Bed Bath and Beyond. They were shipping every single store to me. Uh, this is the T101 extra long alarm clock. There's black, pink, it was a Pepto Bismol pink, a neon pink, a red, and a silver. You can get these for under five dollars. They sell for over twenty dollars every day. People I love can, them. I, yeah. Um, you know, it, when you when you go to the, go to the, the sections because you need to test video game systems. Look for the AC adapters for the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance, Game Boy SP, the DSs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep, keep batteries with you. Finally, because when, when you go to the store and you get the Game Boy systems, well, it's all, well also if you if you find the Wii sleeves in colors, the you know the this is the, the Mario and Luigi one or something like that. These are worth money. The regular plastic silicone sleeves aren't worth much. Um, those are the first ones I found in a thrift store in colors. So, but you know the other thing you might want to keep with you if you're going to be buy game systems, just keep one game with you. Keep a Game Boy Advance game. Yeah. Keep a Game Boy Color game. You know, keep keep Tetris. Keep something stupid. And what you do is you put the battery system. You know, you pop in your game, you test it out, it works, make sure there's sound, boom, you're done. Because most yep. stores have no return policies. Mm. True, yeah, yeah, that's true. Especially, like, and with something like electronics, if it doesn't work, you're, yeah. Yeah. Really smart. So, let's see. I have a Texas Instruments, it's some type of scientific calculator. I have, I think the, the batteries that came, I bought it in a thrift store a while back. I haven't listed it yet. Um, but I think the batteries that came with it are bad because it's not, but I'm going to, I have to swap out the batteries and I bet it'll work great and I can sell it for a decent amount. When it comes to game cubes, the real controller says Nintendo GameCube on here. There's a generic one that just is the same color as a controller. Those are horrible. Okay. When you, okay. If you're going to sell systems, you want the actual controller, just look for the actual stuff. Um, that's where you're going to get your, you know, that's where you're going to have the most success. And get the most value for your buck. Um, oh, there. And just just as an example, really quickly, um, 
Uh, GameCube controllers. The uh, if you have used controllers, okay. The PS2 DualShock controller is twenty dollars. The GameCube black is twenty. Uh, platinum is thirty. The purple is twenty. Nintendo 64 controllers are on twenty five dollars each. Um, Dreamcast controllers twenty five dollars. And, and these controllers you can get for two three bucks on press store. The Dreamcast VMU, which is the visual memory unit. When GameStop was getting rid of Dreamcast and all that, they were doing seventy five percent off. Buy two get one free and all this other stuff. I have about two hundred or so VMUs. But I paid nothing for them. They're currently going between $25 and $40 each. And if you find one, it takes two batteries, um, 2032 batteries, screwdriver, two batteries. My suggestion for anybody needing 22, if you're going to buy 2032 batteries, buy them from China and eBay because it's a video game. It's, it's Why spend $2 a battery in the United States when you can get 20 of them for nothing? Yeah. yeah. So you, so you send them with the batteries, right? That's... You know, a lot of people will sell them. Um, if you look at uh, a lot of the controllers, like the N64 controllers, the thumbsticks are bad. They wobble because at the, um, mm -hmm. on the N64 one, the, the main thumbstick in the center, that's obviously not on this thing, goes bad. And so people will say, bad, you know, bad thumbstick, bad thumbstick. If you replace the thumbstick, if you replace the batteries and you say, fresh batteries installed, now mm -hmm. someone's going to be happier because it actually works. Or you can actually yeah. show it working. Yeah. That you know, and someone might buy quantities of them from you, two, uh, three, four. So you just get cheap batteries. Just send it. Yeah, just send it. With, that's a good idea. That's a good tip. I know, like even, and there, it's probably more expensive because you're actually getting them for. But I know even like the dollar store batteries, they don't last that long. But you know, it's honestly the ones I got from China work fine. I've never had a problem okay. with them. They work just but, as long. Yeah. No. You just find your good. You know, you find a good supplier you buy from that you trust, and you're you know look at the feedback like everything else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's a good tip. Should we um, move on to our what sold? Yeah, sure. I guess. Uh, do you have anything else to show, Brian? Or <laughs> oh, I can I can go on forever, but I'm, sure, you, <laughs> and I'm sure we would love. I mean, I'm learning so much, but I, I'm keeping an eye on the time, and I know we've been on. Yeah, for a while. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um. We do have a couple of bits of breaking news and then I'll go on to the solds. Um, so um, this is interesting. So Lola, do you want to talk about this a little bit since you found this? Yeah, I just thought this was interesting. I saw this headline. Um, it, it reminded me a little bit of what um, we were talking about last week with Etsy kind of cracking down on stuff. So it seems like Amazon is starting to remove some of the, um, uh, like uh, Chinese products that um, have a lot of fake reviews or um, are just sort of deceptive. And I mean, I think we are all probably familiar with that where you're looking for the right um, item on Amazon and it just feels like a game now where you kind of have to like run it through a checker to see if all the reviews are real or not and and what the real rating is once, you know, once you've done that. So um, it, it seems like they're, they're maybe across the board, um, kind of addressing some of these issues of like customer trust and, and, um, and trying to, I don't know, maybe re revive a little bit of the reputation um, for, for what you get on Amazon, um, just like on Etsy. So I just thought it was, I mean, two articles isn't exactly a trend, but you know, it seems like maybe something to keep an eye on, on and, um, and this yeah. could reflect, or, you know, this could be good for us as sellers because if, um, if the other items that are being listed are, are better, you know, quality, better, tr more trustworthy, then people are going to be more willing to spend their money on these platforms. So, okay. and as good as buyers too, I mean, you know, um, yeah. and then, yeah, this is super exciting. Nay, do you want, I know you were. Yeah. Excited. So you can buy NFTs on eBay and blockchain driven collectibles are coming soon. So they just approve that. So I, so <clears throat> I have to do a little more research on exactly what they are, but they're non fungible, non -fungible tokens. Yeah, tokens, which I guess, um, you know, like doggy coin, and but it's a digital representation. Um, so I guess um, they're now going to allow sales of those. So, yeah, so um, I am not an expert, but I have been following this a little bit because I'm really interested in what it means for the art world. Basically, it's a way that you can create a um, a unique digital item. So if you have like a um, 
an artwork that is completely digital. It's never been, it's never existed in the physical world. Um, you can make it so that you can actually own that unique item. Um, and that's what the NFT is. The NFT is that like unique instance of that artwork. Um, but it's also used for a lot of other things and um, it, the applications just seem really endless. So like you could create an NFT of a sports ticket. And then if you're selling it online, it's that much more secure that you're, you're more, um, you can be certain that you're not buying a fake ticket if you're buying an NFT of a ticket. Um, so I think we will see a lot of, um, of those, you know, uses, um, starting to come, you know, come into use and, um, <laughs> yeah, I, so I felt when I was yeah, like, I was like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. like I'm still like not quite understanding, but it is, I know it's big news because it is, yeah. it is something that, yeah, it's a new, it, it, it is going to be something that, um, because I think will become commonplace soon enough um, that we'll all use in different ways. And um, yeah, so. um, for collectibles, I mean, it's just, you know, it could be a, a digital trading card or, um, this, you know, this explains it a little better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they allow you to buy and sell ownership of unique digital items and keep track of who owns them using the blockchain. So yeah, I know it stands for non fungible token. It can te technically, technically contain anything digital, including drawings, animated, gifts, songs, or items in video games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool. I guess that's the way of the, that's, that's the future, you know, that's. Yeah. And I think for people who sell um, collectibles in general, it's going to affect the collectible market overall. If this is something that people are spending their money on versus like a physical item, you know, it may, it may um, divide some attention, but it also might fuel interest in collectibles as well. So, I mean, it, see, we'll see how it shakes out. I think it'll be interesting. And I now have uh, our market report. So I have, I have, uh, Brian has um, some solds here that he's going to share. So this is $130 and I'm trying to zoom back down. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So what was it? Is this a Sega? Okay. This is Sega uh, Saturn. Yeah. I forgot that the, uh, if some of those do change once you, uh, once I sell, um, yeah, Sega Saturn. That's one of the bundles I got from uh, that I showed the big box. So yeah, Hexen and uh, Career Crisis were the two games that I got the quantities of, and uh, that was my la that's my last copy that sold. That one, that's the one that went to Canada. Wow. Yeah, that's a that was a good good sale there. And then this one again is uh, another Saturn game. Yeah, that's wow. the one that that's the box I had here, the Career Crisis yeah, game. Okay. Okay. So is this? Um, cause this isn't your listing, right? Oh wait, this one is the last one. Wasn't, I think, did it just, pull uh, up the next yeah, I think I gave thing? links, but because they sold, I think it goes to the generic page. Oh, geez, yeah. So it must yeah. have gone to somebody, but okay. But it's still that the price is like, yeah. Yeah. It's still the same. Price. I think it was one twenty nine ninety nine for Hexen and it is one forty nine. That is my, that's my, it should be my listing. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's listing. Listing. yeah. I I just to yeah. And then this one. Is again, I don't know why they're not going to your. I think um, for, for video games, they have the like master page now, so I guess that, if that's that available, yeah, that might, that might be mine because I, I mine is new. Um, you can still find new sealed PlayStation games. I mean, I, same thing, you look in the CD section of your thrift stores, um, you know, garage sales, thrift, you know, any, any place. This is a, a, something I did get from my distributor, it sat around, um, you know, it's it just never sold because it didn't sell. And now that I listed it online, it's actually worth a lot more. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I think it was 1999 at the flea market. Nobody wanted it. And wow. Well, so yeah. you, you really lucked out. It didn't sell for 1999. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez, goodness. That's crazy. And then, yeah, and that's just a great reminder too, that like okay. a dud, a dud could be a future score. Um, Maybe not the lessons, the lessons not to hold on to everything and not get rid of stuff that's not moving, but to, to rethink of rethink your platform, hold on to something because of its collectible, it could change in value. And then was this okay, your list? No, no, I sold it for fifty bucks. Your actual listings, but anyway. Yeah, I sold it for fifty bucks. I got that, I bought that for I was at uh, actually Goodwill and I don't know why they put it out because they scan everything. But it was on the shelf, I think it was five dollars. 
Wow. And I just knew, I said, Grateful Dead. I just grabbed it for, I didn't even scan it first. I threw it, I, I yeah. threw it in my, and then when I scanned it, it I did sell it for uh, $50 plus shipping. Okay. Good. To, wow. That's a good bolo there. <laughs> and then this one again is. Okay. And then I would look that one up too. Just to be safe. Thank you. Cell phone, $62.99. Okay. Wow. So I, I wow. Sold, I sold it, wow. I sold it for more than uh, the yeah, new other. Yeah. It's currently available for it. Yeah, well, sorry. You know what? Oh, you know what? I did actually never mind. That one that one I just took a look. Order was canceled. Oh, oh bummer. Darn. I hate it when that happens. But but I did still. <laughs> that was a confusing one. No wonder it sold because they didn't want it. Um Okay, that was a, that, that one I remember was Salvation Army. Again, you know, it's you just gotta it's a, one of the things that I that I was that I would like to most people who are confused about video games, this is something I'm going to point out, the tie in clothing and video games. Um, I was a Goodwill, and which relates to this. I was a Goodwill, and I saw this Chicago Bulls shirt. And I said, okay, that looks funky, and I grabbed it. It is a Magic Johnson Chicago Bulls shirt. Hmm. cost me $5, and sold are between $150 and $200. Wow. wow. So, I know nothing about clothing. I'm learning slowly. I found the same, It's the same thing with, with uh, DVDs and video games. I saw that in here that I, it was a big box set. I think it was uh, five or six dollars at Salvation Army. And it, yeah, it sold um, fairly quickly. Uh, in the heat, um, trust of. It did sell for $69.99 plus shipping. Okay. Um, and it was a 24 hour television marathon set of eight DVDs. That's what, that's what caught me on it. It was all eight DVDs. And. The, I mean, now, video games, just so people know, video games cannot ship media mail. I don't care what anyone tells you. Never ship a video game media okay. mail. DVDs, okay. yes. Okay. So this was only like, what, 4 or $5 a ship? It was nothing. I don't even think I knew that about the no media mail for video games. Oh, That's I actually, like, I, yeah. I think I, knew, I would have thought the opposite. I wouldn't have known that you could ship. So you said DVDs can ship media mail? Yeah. Is, and the ruling was, yes, in, in August 2009, USPS came out with a ruling that video games do not qualify. Media mail is meant for media, which is basically educational materials, books, CDs, DVDs, um, no advertising, so no magazines, and video right. games are not considered educational. Even though they're educational video games, majority of video games are not educational, so they made a, determined, they made a ruling that video games don't qualify. So, the best but, part about so that... A DVD that's also, purely entertainment would count as media. All your music CDs, your DVDs. Now, mm -hmm. there's a caveat to this. Media mail is the slowest form of shipping. For a couple cents more, like on most DVDs, if you pick up a, a music CD, it's going to cost a music CD or DVD, there's $289 shipped, media mail, if under a pound. Mm -hmm. If you go first class, you're talking $335, $359. You're going to go back there in three to five days, first class. Yeah, that send that the first class. Yeah. Well, I, I send honestly, I've, media mail. I've got no complaints. I've got great feedback. People love it. So, so far, I've been okay. I'm being cheap. Okay. But, but, um, it, but first class isn't that much more expensive and it is faster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, unless it's heavy I, like that. I sold this. I actually took a best offer of $50 for this nice. magazine. I know I could have held out and gotten a little bit more. Like they were selling between 50 and 70 or so. So 75, you know, but, but I, I took $50 for a magazine that was just laying around, you know, since 99. And uh, so it was uh, something, you know, that was just in my mom's house. She has a whole collection of times, time magazine. So um, that was a good, um, that worked out well <laughs> that, and I shipped it yesterday. We were talking about ads yesterday. I did put two pieces of cardboard um, in with it and shipped it in a poly mailer. So, and then this sold for $19.99. I got this uh, again, thrift to you. I got it for a dollar and it was, um, you know, just a vintage 80 shirt. It's really cute. And Thank you. Yeah, it was cute. It was cute. I, I would have kept it if it was. Did you list it on Depop? It just seems like. I it. did, and it sold on eBay. I listed on <laughs> Depop and on eBay. And then speaking of Skechers, these were in a blue box. And um, I, so I got them, you know, it's five pairs for $30. And I got, sold them for twenty four fifty plus shipping. And they actually went in a padded flat rate. They fit really well because that kind of sneaker you can like flats and sneakers, some, mm -hmm. some things you can 
safely put. I just stuffed them with tissue paper, wrapped them, put them in a padded mailer and off they went. So, and then um, I sold, I had one day pop sale and she was, she was really nice. She asked me for more photos and I was like, I can't add more photos because Depop only allows you to put four, four photos in the listing, which is really annoying. So I was like, how about a video? So she said, okay, that would work. So I took a quick, um, I took a really quick video and, um, and I just, I didn't, you know, just add any sound or anything. I just took like a, wow, that's playing fast, but <laughs> I don't think that's playing back the, yeah, it's, but anyway, I just took a quick video. She's like, just throw up a 360 video of it. And, um, and then that, that should be good. So I did that for her and then she bought it right away. So Whoa. I, sold, yeah, so I sold that poncho for 34 or $35, I think. Yeah. $35 plus shipping. And I found that at the bins. Wow. Uh, that's great. a while back. I had listed it. Not I list. It took me a while to list, but it was from the bins and it had no um, tags or anything. I think it might've been handmade. And so that was a good, you know, that's a good bins find there. Yeah, for sure. And yep. a great example of just going a little bit above and beyond for the customer to make the sale. Exactly. So yeah, she was happy when she was, when she saw the videos, she wanted more. She's like, can't you add more photos? There's only four pics. I'm like, cause Depop only allows four photos. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, that is kind of annoying. <laughs> right. I mean, mm -hmm. and then um, I guess that's, we do have a question for you. So, we were wondering what is a new area of reselling that you want to learn. So kind of like Brian, you know, that this is all something that we're not as familiar with. So we're learning. Um, what is there, are there any areas of, uh, of the thrift store or any areas of that, that aren't quite in your expertise that you would like to learn? Let us know in the YouTube comments. And then Brian um, can be found his, he's mostly discounters. So, um, I showed his eBay store, but Brian, you also sell on a whole lot of other platforms. <laughs> yeah, this is impressive. <laughs> so I don't even know about True Gather. So that's the little uh, blocky looking logo there. That's True Gather. So that's an unfamiliar platform. Is that form. like Bonanza? I feel like it rings yes. a bell. Yeah, okay. True Gather and Bonanza, grab your eBay and or Amazon listings and list them on their site. So it's I don't get a lot of sales from them, but it's just the fact that they grab all your listings and you get it. The fees are different. So you get it. It's a little bit less. You could say charge the 15% less or whatever it is. And um, it's an extra sale here or there. And it supposedly will remove your listing from eBay once it sells. But I always check anyways. I've never had a problem, but other people have said mm -hmm. that they've uh, sold stuff on Bonanza and it didn't remove the item. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's just another one of those sites. It's, it's another site that lists all your stuff for free, basically. Cool. So, yeah. So, uh, check out Brian's. Uh, you can find him. He's discounters everywhere. So, and uh, if you uh, want to connect with him on social media, discounters on Instagram. But uh, definitely check out his stores, his Poshmark closet. And uh, I'm impressed. You're on Poshmark, too. Yeah, you're on more places than we are. So. I yeah. haven't used Poshmark really, but I'm on it. Well, you know, we'll get you there. Yeah. We'll get those jeans listed. And, uh, yeah. You have everything, everything in your closet. Yeah. And then um, <laughs> you can find us everywhere. We are mm -hmm. mostly, um, I'm mostly Thrifty A, except for my weird eBay name, which is Cold Bray Asterisk Dazzle. Lola is Run Lola Run or uh, Lola Thrifts on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And low two dashes NFI on eBay. And if you have an idea for an upcoming video, you want to be a future guest, we are very much, we welcome ideas, comments, questions, let us know. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are trying, we're, we're getting towards, we're so close. I know we're getting, we're getting slowly inching towards a thousand subscribers are really excited. So we need your help to get there. So uh, definitely subscribe. Yeah, and share, share our um, our show with your friends. If there's anything that you found helpful, you think other people might um, might learn from, it would be great to uh, to spread the word. So thank you so much for watching. And um, yeah, we'll be back next week with our um, 
summer 2021 home decor trends, things that you might find in the thrift store, um, things that will be selling on Poshmark or eBay, and um, it should be fun. And yeah. thank you again, Brian. This was so great. I've learned so much. I learned so much. Thank you so much for your time today and uh, for educating us on so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I certainly appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone.